campers. Welcome to my in-home studio. I am Mrs. Moser and the 3D instructor for Black Swamp Arts Council Summer Camp. This year, summer camp is in a bag, so it's a little different, but I'm looking forward to helping you utilize the supplies that are in the bag. There should be two clay projects per bag for us to create. The first project that we're gonna start creating is going to be called the rainbow fish. It looks like this. So this was a very fun summertime project to work with. Uh, it requires us to roll out the clay and to learn how to cut the clay and then add sequins for a very cool summertime look. So this is sort of based off maybe the book that you've heard of before, the rainbow fish. So it's a very fun, colorful summer project for us to work on. I think you'll really enjoy this one. So let's get started making your summertime more fantastic and let's start creating with clay. Okay campers, so here's the rainbow fish project we're gonna try to create. Um, it's a very fun, simple roll out clay and cut the shape out and then add sequins. For your supplies, here's what you're gonna need. First, we have created for your art camp in a bag, a nice little laminated mat for you to use. I would suggest to make sure you have all your supplies collected and have this mat and work in a place where it's okay to use clay. You know, preferably not over a carpeted room would be a great idea. Um, or outdoors is nice too, to soak in that wonderful sunshine that we have been having all summer long. So this is a really cool mat. We also put in your bag a Arteza dry erase marker. This dry erase marker you could use on the laminated um, design that you could color in. You could draw on the back. My other suggestion as you're working with this is if you've got multiple um, kids that are with you at home that you're going to be able to create this together as a group, you know, brother or sister is going to be there, make sure on your mat you put your name on one side so you can use the other side for your clay. So I've written my name on there and I'm going to flip it over to use it as my clay mat. And your supplies that you're going to have to collect out of your bag is going to be your knife. We're going to need our sequins. We're going to need, out of the bag, I believe you should have some an eye. You should also have a fish template that we're going to use. Um, I would suggest cutting that out using heavy-duty scissors, and like I did, I made sure that I stayed within the line. A nice little cup of water would be a great idea. A shallow dish is perfect. And then you're going to need your air dryable clay. It looks like this. It's gray. Not the Model Magic. It's gray. And then we're going to need, lastly, something to make marks in our clay. So I thought of something that you might have very simply as a paper clip. And we're going to take the one end out from the paper clip so you can use it as a pointed tool. And then lastly, you're going to need to come up with some sort of rolling pin, which is not in your bag. So the first thing that I came to at home is we have an old Play-Doh. From our Play-Doh days, we have an old rolling pin. So it's a small little rolling pin. You could use something like that. Let's say you don't have a rolling pin at home like that. So you could go into the kitchen um, and maybe look for a simple jar like this that also provides a great rolling tool. Um, a heavy-duty plastic cup, anything that's super smooth, that's what's going to work the best. Uh, another place where you could find something to use to roll with would maybe be the garage. This is just a PVC pipe long enough so you could roll it out as well. So anything that has a smooth surface that is cylinder would work perfect for rolling out your fish um, project. Okay, so now we're going to take some of our air dryable clay. You're going to take out a chunk of it and you're going to go ahead and knead it and wedge it to kind of just work out the moisture. I've worked with this one for maybe about five minutes or so, so it's ready to go, ready to um, go ahead and roll out. So before I start rolling it out, I like to press it down and sort of pancake it so it's in a nice good shape and it's already somewhat flat. Okay, so I'm going to take, um, so there's not so sticky on the mat, some burlap that I had at home. And I'm going to start with my rolling pin. And I'm going to start rolling out the 
the clay into an even thickness. We're trying to make sure that as we're rolling it, have your template nearby so you can sort of see which area do you need to stretch it to. So I see I need more length right here, so I'm going to keep rolling it this way. So if I can't make it that far and, and you don't want to make the clay too thin, I can always tear a section off that I don't need and place it over here so I can get the length and then I can keep rolling it out. And I'll flip it over to both sides like so until I get the whole length. Um, we're looking for about a fourth of an inch thickness so that looks like this pretty much like the size of your pinky probably and once it's rolled out like this piece is we're going to take the clay template move it on here so we know it can fit entirely. Once it's fitting, you're going to take your knife and you're going to go ahead and trace all the way around it. So I'm going to press all the way around it until I have my fish cut out. So take your time as you're going around to get your fish shape exactly how you want it. Now it's going to look a little rough around the edges which is why we had a small cup of water. So I'm going to take the excess off the outside and the roughness will go away with our our water edges. So as you can see I'm just pressing down pulling away the extra. Okay. And then we can take the laminated fish template off and there you have your fish shape. So now I'm going to take the small cup of water that I have and I'm going to dip my hands in it and as I pick my fish up, always pull up so you don't stretch it out, I'm going to just rub those edges clean so it's nice and soft. Okay, so you'll go all the way around like that. So you can see the difference. Look at that difference. You have really jagged and then it has a very smooth edge. So you just keep rubbing it out and until you get it as nice and smooth like this, then it's ready to go. So I rub down the edges and you can also take just a little bit of water on your fingers and you can see I have some texture or on the mat you might have a little texture then you can rub that out. So anything that you don't want you could rub it out. So once, let's say I have this all cleaned up, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fish template and I'm going to lay it up here beside me and then I can see all of the lines that I need to draw in. And I'm going to take the paper clip and I'm going to go ahead and draw this incised line here and I'm going to draw, for separating the tail from the body, I'm going to separate the fin from the body. Just press it in. Don't hold it up and down like this and drag it. It makes a lot of sharp pieces of clay. We don't want to be going through the clay. We're just on the top of the surface, just like that. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to put a little indent here for the fin. And a little indent here. And then from here to here, we're going to create that next line. So a little squiggly line coming out and then back into this line down at the bottom. And then I'm going to make a small indent with the paper clip for the mouth. And there you have it. We have all of the fish parts. Now, the next part that we're going to do, which is pretty fun, is we're going to take our eye and all you need to do is set it in the center in the eye where you want it and press it down pretty firmly so it has a bit of a place to sit into so it should be a little bit lower and then you can clean it up around there if you need to so once it's pushed in that's set to go oh look we got a sequin that got in there <laughs> and which is he was all ready for the next step don't worry about the clay if you have a little clay on it it comes right off especially when it dries It'll just be a little dusty. So the next part that we're going to do is we're going to take a few of our sparkly sequins. You've got many different sizes. 
And with the different sizes that you have, you've got different colors. So in my example, I had taken the time to take the sequin, and with the sequin, you're going to place it into the clay kind of in an angle. So you can see the clay is sort of in an angle. See the sequin sort of sticks up. And then I use the next color. So I chose to use big ones first. And then as I got over to this side, I would use a lot more smaller sequins. So you make a whole row first. And then once you have a row in, I would start the next row maybe with a different color. So I'm going to have to search for a few other colors here. Here's some more choices. Oh, we'll go with this bright pink. And with a bright pink, I'm going to put it in between the first two. So it's staggered. Maybe you can see that better. And we have the next one. And then you just continue on adding to fill it up. Sometimes if you had a small space, I'd use a smaller sequin. And if you had a bigger space, you'd use a bigger one. And so then you just keep on going until it fills up the whole area that you need sequins to create that beautiful fan look. And then the last thing that I would add on would be our tail fins lines. I just press those in here to give it that fancy fish feel down at the bottom with his flippers and down at the top I angle them and I push them in to make those lines. And if you want a few gills on the side I added those too. And then there you have are your fish. So if you keep adding those sequins it really fills it in and then you're gonna leave it on your mat to dry uh, preferably uh, maybe around three to four hours just come back and check to make sure that your fish is not warping up so sometimes the tail wants to come up or the face wants to come out you just gently push it down and then when you come back later in a few more hours you keep checking on it and then within 24 hours this fish should be fully dry you can see the difference it's really dark here and that means it's got a lot of water into the air dryable clay and here you have it all dried out so therefore it's really ready for us to go ahead and use and manipulate so if you wanted to, this is just pretty and decorative. It might be a little fragile, so you have to be careful with it because it's not really ceramic fired, but it's still pretty durable as long as you let it air dry. But something that you can do on the back would be maybe adding a magnet. So like this on my glass that I sell, I have a um, really heavy duty magnet. You can see it's pretty thick around this edge. So it's a nice magnet that you could probably put on the back of this because it does have some weight to it. You could hot glue it when you're finished and then you could put it on there. That unfortunately isn't in your bag, but that's something you could easily find at Walmart for a few dollars. They aren't really expensive. And so there you have it. That's your rainbow fish. Um, I hope you have a good time making this fish. It was very fun. I thoroughly enjoyed putting all the sequins in and picking the right colors to make this as flashy and as beautiful as possible for our summertime feature. So enjoy creating your rainbow fish.